And the next question is something I think you are going to say next question to. Um, but this obviously brings up to all of us in this audience the idea of uh, taxing food, taxing sodas that we think also lead to obesity. And we're about to get into obesity. But the strategy of using a tax to put into health programs, public health programs, to save, enor to save the healthcare system enormous amounts of money down the line and hope that it will have a salubrious international influence. For example, a lot of the reason one could posit that tobacco is such a huge international problem is because if we are very effective in reducing tobacco use here, um, marketers will find markets in other emerging, westernizing the global south. And that will continue to be a problem there. The same thing might happen if there is, you know, something like a, a food tax. Is that is that no? Are we going nowhere near that? If you look at what are the lessons from tobacco control for other public health problems, because we've made a lot of progress in tobacco, even though we have so much further to go. Mm -hmm. There are three main strategies that together have changed that social norm. You know, in tobacco. Social norm, everyone. We've changed it from "Would you like a cigarette?" to "Do you mind if I smoke?" That's a huge change in society. But well, that's, that's more than that. We've pushed people outdoors. Three things. We've changed the price, we've changed the access, and we've changed the image. So price is from things like taxation. Uh, access is from things like smoke-free places, and whether kids can get cigarettes in vending machines or in stores. And we've changed the image by hard-hitting ads and by reducing, not eliminating by a long shot, by by reducing the amount of advertising, marketing, promotion the tobacco industry does. Those same three components are likely to be relevant for various other things. But in obesity, if we're completely honest, we'll say, we don't know what's causing it. I can give you four or five mutually ex exclusive explanations of why we're in the midst of an obesity epidemic, and they're all really convincing, and they can't all be right. We also, because of that... They're really mutually in conflict? They couldn't all be right together and be contributors? That's another possibility. But we don't know. We really don't know. And because of that, we don't know exactly what will work to reverse it. What we do know is that we've got to try things. We do know it's a really serious problem. It's causing more than a quarter of our healthcare inflation. It's causing huge disability. Our diabetes rate has doubled or tripled. Our children have increased in weight faster than anyone would have thought possible. The health consequences of obesity are, affect vir virtually every part of the, of the body. So it's a serious problem. So what do we do? We try things. I mean, that's what we did in tobacco control. When California started going smoke-free in communities, we didn't know if it would work. Now we know that if you go smoke-free, it doesn't hurt business, it saves lives, it probably even reduces heart attacks in people who don't smoke. So we need communities to try things and rigorously evaluate them. That's what we're about. We're not about uh, doing what we think works. We're about being rigorous and doing what we are certain will work. And if we're not certain what will work, then trying something and rigorously evaluating. 